but I'm in love. No, no. With someone else And I'm sorry baby yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in love with another This is a Candid Candice exclusive This Candid Candice exclusive features four time Grammy nominated singer songwriter producer T.C. Tyon Christian TC is famously known for working with phenomenal artists such as Justin Bieber, John Legend, Keisha Cole, Brandy, the K-pop boy band SF9, Tamar Braxton, and many more. After providing all of these amazing artists with his phenomenal talent of songwriting and producing, on Juneteenth 2020, TC released his own debut album called Rain. And on Friday, July 17th, I had the opportunity to talk to TC and celebrate his phenomenal new album and his inspirational journey in the music business. His journey is phenomenal and you've got to hear it. Check this out. This is a Candid Candice exclusive. Listen, I'm excited to talk to you. <laughs> Look, let, let me tell the people real quick. Y'all don't understand, like, I'm having a fan moment because my love for TC goes back to his YouTube days. I mean, he's still oh. on YouTube, but I'm talking about back, back. Not like, not like then. You know, yes, exactly. Yeah, not like then. But we're going to get to that. Okay, we're going to get to that. And you better let me know if I got anything on my teeth because this lipstick is struggling. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. We, you know, nice. You know what I'm saying? All saying. <laughs> okay, so I'm so excited. Okay, you guys. So this is TC Tion Christian. Please tell me I'm saying your name right. Tion. Dang it. Dang it. See, I'm it's used to right. calling you TC. A lot of people is used to calling me TC. So when they saw that I did the transfer from songwriter TC to Tion, T I Y O N Christian, Right. It's like, hey, Tion, they just call me Tion. Now I was just like, just, just call me TC. TC, But you know me. You know what I'm saying? But if you want to know <laughs> how to pronounce my name, it's Tyon. 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 That is, that's unique. Okay. Tyon Christian. TC. New album. Debut yes. album. Rain. Rain. It's so good. But let Thank me tell you. people a little bit about you. Okay. Just in case they don't know. Okay. All right. All right. All right, you guys. So TC, he has his new album out. It's called Rain. Now, what most people know him for is for being um, a songwriter and producer. Background singing on some of the albums that he works on. And so I'm, I wrote my little list, you guys. So let me tell you some of the people he's worked with. And this is mm -hmm. just some. This is just some of the people. All right. So we got Miss Keisha Cole. J-Lo, Brandy, Justin Bieber, John Legend, Tamar Braxton, and more. So the last person that I mentioned, um, Tamar Braxton, this was not a planned question, but since Tamar Braxton is in the news today, I, I felt a little uncomfortable just brushing past her name. I, I wanted to maybe not talk about her because it may seem a little bit insensitive, but at the same time, working with Tamar Braxton is a, it is a big part of your career. So mm -hmm. I do have to ask you, how are you feeling, you know, with hearing all of this news about Tamar Braxton having an alleged suicide attempt currently in the hospital, unresponsive. It's actually really sad. And you were really close with her, you know, and her family. So how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Um, It's like different emotions, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um I um I just I just hope that she comes out okay, you know, and I hope that um that she that she's fine and that she's happy, you know what I'm saying? Uh I think for me, I've always been an advocate for mental health and um bringing attention to it because I too have struggled with the whole, you know, 
the depressions and the suicides and different stuff like that. And, you know, we don't really know if that is really honestly what happened. So I, I can't really speak on that aspect, but you know, whatever is going on, I hope that there's just like peace and understanding and just like, um, she's happy with what's going on. Cause I'm, I'm so detached from like everything that's going on in media right now. Um, yeah. I've been so focused on my album. So I, I honestly didn't even know about it until I want to say last night I was on live and then my viewers was like, Hey, do you know the da da this? And I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, right. so, um, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> definitely, um, mixed emotions i understand i understand and i know you said you can't speak to it because you know none of us were there and <clears throat> i was shocked with the information this morning i actually went to bed early you know preparing for this interview so when i saw it this morning it's, it's really hard with the media especially for me you know i do commentary i i do some some gossip and stuff it's hard to tell what's factual, what's gossip, but mm -hmm. do you mind me asking just from your experience with being, <coughs> excuse me, with being around her, your opinion, do you feel like she would ever try to take her life? I mean, well, I mean, the reality is everybody don't know what someone is going through. Me personally, I don't feel that she would because, I mean, she loves Logan like there's no tomorrow if any. If there was any reason for her to live, that would be the main reason. You know what I'm saying? Right. Logan is so loved. So, you know, I I can't I can't tell you that. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I really don't know. You know, I've yeah. been in my own little bubble and like just really concentrating on my own stuff. So, you know, to hear that is is like it hits the heart a little bit. So yeah. it's kind of like I don't I don't know. I can't even I can't even speak on it. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you answering the question because I know that that had to be hard enough just just us talking about it. So we are going to switch it off and talk about the album because I spent all night just well all week, honestly, listening to everything. And then last night, like I told you, I went to sleep early because I'm like, I got to be ready. So with your album, Rain, let's start with the name. What made you choose the name Rain? Um, well, rain for me, I think symbolized like so much as far as like a rebirth, mm -hmm. um, just, uh, my mind is just everywhere right now. It's like, I know, I'm sorry. But, mine um, too. um, it's like a, sim it's symbolic of like, just, um, you know, feeling like like I said, a rebirth, but also it could be karma. It could be different things as far as like um, water and just all kinds of things. Me being a songwriter and then coming into my own artistry, it's kind of mm -hmm. like a resurgence of like a new person. You know what I'm saying? So sorry, my dog is just like going crazy. That's now. okay. Because I was going to say, you probably going to hear some doors opening. My, my husband walking through. So it's Listen. okay. <laughs> so you said it's like a rebirth, like coming into a new person. Now, when you say coming into a new person, do you feel like it's um, you being more true to yourself or, yeah, liter or literally changing to a new person? Definitely. I think that it's a, it's <laughs> it's I, okay. It's, sorry. He, <laughs> Just okay. So I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like I've changed so much within the last couple of years. Like I feel like I had to go through a lot of things to kind of get to where I'm at right now. Like I said, mm -hmm. depression and um, you know, the suicidal thoughts and different stuff like that. Like I had to Oh, we lost a little bit of connection, y'all. One second. Okay. I'm oh, stupid. So to sit in on the interview. That's okay, baby. You can be there. I used to have a dog when I was little. His name was Vegas. He was a little Yorkshire Terrier mixed with a poodle, baby. And he, I miss oh, him. This he gone. one is a great Dane. Okay. Let me see. Can, I, can I just get a peek? Just come here. peek it down. Come here. Come here. Peek come it here. down. Come here. Come here. Come here. Ooh. Yeah. Hey, eight months. Eight months. He's a baby. Eight. 
Eight months and big is all I don't know. She it's a girl. But, oh she, she. Yeah. But um, yeah, I um I'm sorry about that. Like No, it's okay. Look, look, look with cor quarantine life, we quarantine. understand it all, okay? Yeah, and then I, next yeah, time it's gonna be in the studio. I also take it sit down. Sit. All right. I take care of my grandmother, you know what I'm saying? Um, uh -huh. she's been in hospice care and stuff like that. Uh -huh. So, um, you know, it's very vital that I stay here with her because my aunt, she works so much. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being that I'm able to work wherever I'm at, you know, I kind of like, it's like, you know, I'll come home and I'll make sure that my grandmother's okay during, you know, the days and stuff like that. So it's been a lot with quarantine, with that, and just like, mm -hmm. you know, um, I don't think we really know the value of what it's like to take care of somebody until you're in the position and have to like constantly hear your name and it's like yeah I just, yeah I you know and then it's just like it's it's a it's just opened my eyes to like life and different stuff like that and it's just I'm grateful for it and I'm I'm just you know it's a lot yeah. it's a lot well I do have to commend you I have I have to commend you because I I have been blessed with laughter whenever you share the mo some moments with your with your grandmother they are they are everything her her personality like that's my best friend like your grandma is funny she's funny I get a little, I get a little something, something from her, you know what I'm saying? So. Definitely. But um, yeah, I think where we left off, we were talking about the meaning of Rain, why you chose the name Rain for your album. You said right. that it's kind of like a rebirth. And, and I asked you, did you feel like you were completely changing into a new person or more so um, accepting who you are and putting who you really are out there more. I believe. That's I think. What I, it, I think it was a, a bit of both. I think that you know coming into this industry has changed me a lot. You yeah. know, um, I don't know if it's been for the good. I don't know if it's been for the bad. But what I do know is that when I went through my whole situation, it just opened my eyes to everything. You know, the people that I was around the situations that I was in. And, yeah. you know, a lot of times when we're in the industry, we blame people for the things that go on in our lives and stuff. But, you know, sometimes we have to take accountability for the things that we do on our end too, to put right. ourselves in those situations for people to do the things that they do for, to us. So, you know, it was a lot of accountability that I had to take for some things. And then just also just, you know, realizing that everybody is not, going to like you everybody is not going to love you and really yeah. acceptance is really for yourself as long as you love yourself you believe in yourself and you know you know your self-worth i think that's the biggest part of mm -hmm. of living because you don't really care for anybody's opinions no more you know and right. i feel like that's where i'm at now it's like i really don't care about how people view me, how people think of me when they don't mm -hmm. know me. And I'm tired of just being the person that does everything that everybody wants because I want to be liked. And my validity, my validity does not come from other people, you know, it comes from myself. So, yeah. yeah. Now, do you feel like that you, what you're saying right now is making me think of um, the section where you did your thank yous for your album? Uh -huh. You talked about, you know, your insecurities and just getting past a lot of that. Um, do you feel like your insecurities were, um, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this, <laughs> did basically the people intensify your insecurities in the business? Oh, 100%. Like, you know, people make you feel like, oh, you're not cute enough, or you're not skinny enough, or you're not this, and you're not that. And for a while, I became super comfortable just writing for everybody else because I felt like I wasn't good enough. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and then you also have people that kind of like stop the progress of what you're trying to what you're trying to do as far as artistry. And you know, for me, for the longest, I think that I wanted the validation from people that you know I looked up to or that I loved or different stuff like that. And mm -hmm. that's just not realistic. You know, you gotta live your life for 
yourself and you got to be happy you got to do what makes you happy no matter how someone else feels about it you know what i'm saying so there's a there could be a million people that don't want me to be an artist but as long as i want to be it and i put in the work to do it that's what i'm going to do so me putting the album out was big for me you know what i'm saying because yeah. it just made me be like okay I, I actually can do it and then it charted so i'm like oh my oh, gosh i don't have you know the big labels behind me i don't have the big budgets i'm using my own money behind everything that i do so it's kind of like it drains your pockets being an independent artist so you mm -hmm. hope that people just go out and they support so you can at least make the money back at least right. some of it you know right but um yes yeah, it's, it's a lot i feel like i accomplished something that i that i really was battling with doing you know yeah but I owe yeah. it, I owed it to the people that supported me for all these years, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. Now speaking of charting, let's talk about it, boo. Because let's talk about it. So the first post I saw was you made a post saying that you charted, you know, number eight. Like you kind of woke up to it, like, oh my gosh, I have the number eight R and B album right now, and you were competing with like I think it was we're well, not competing, but you were in that top ten list along with I think it was the Weekend, Janae. Uh, Aiko, who else? It was some. Uh, it was the top Chloe one was and like Halle. Chloe Halle, John Legend had just put his album out, and Tiana Taylor. So they were yes. like the the main. You was people. up was, there. Listen, I was up there, and then I was, you know, on the top five, you know, R and B best selling albums on Amazon, right behind yes. John Legend and Chloe and Halle, and you know, Ro James and all these other amazing uh, Tiana Taylor amazing artist so for me to just like put something together on my own and just put it out there and it mm -hmm. do that good and i didn't expect the love and support that i would have got from everybody but yeah. it just blew my mind and it just was for me a testament that anything that you put your mind to you can actually do it if you just yes. do it you yes, know yes. a lot of people we, we we're self-conscious and we think about everything that we do in life and we kind of hold ourselves back from certain things but unless you do it you'll never know mm -hmm. exactly what can happen i feel like i've held my myself back for so <sighs> long for so long and i'm just i'm i'm happy with life i'm happy with my circle my surroundings i'm just happy with like everything and it, i feel like the music just shows and not just the music. Like, I'm staring at your face right now. You seem so fulfilled. You know what I mean? I am. Like, like, even with, you know, the difficult conversation we had earlier and then just everything in life. You said your grandma, the dogs, the dogs start barking. But the Listen. minute you talk about your music and rain, your eyes light up and my eyes lighten up thinking about things that I want to do in life. Like, you yeah. are extremely inspirational and I need you to know that. Oh, thank like, you. For I, real. For me, it's, I'm, I'm real big on, now in my life, I'm real big on um, protecting new creatives that's coming into the industry. Like, I've been doing mm -hmm. this since, I want to say, 12 years now. Crazy, 12 years. Okay. But 2008 was my first placement, and the 2008, 2009, so. Um, what was it? Uh, Acapella, Something's Missing by Brandy. Okay. Yeah. So... From that, I feel like I've been in so many situations that if I wasn't in, I probably would be better and, you know, mentally and different stuff like that. And for me now, I want to make sure that I speak up on a lot of things that happens in the industry. So a lot of the new writers that's coming in, you know, that want to sign that publishing deal, that want to sign that production deal, that, you know, want to be cool with the artist and da da this whatever Mm -hmm. Know your boundaries, read your contracts, don't sign with people just because of who they are or who they may know or just because they're a record company. Make sure that it benefits you, not just them. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And I think that I've been in those situations of trusting people and then mm -hmm. it turns out that it's really not a good situation. So every situation is not a good situation. Uh, when it comes to this industry and having someone that has your back is like really important, especially for creatives. And yeah, yeah, I, I, I really want to stress that because I don't want anybody to be in the positions that I've been in, you know. Right. And this might be a little too touchy, but 
as you're saying that advice, I got to be honest, some people will be like, well, what do you mean? Did you not sign a contract at all? Right. Or did you or did you did you sign contracts that just weren't good? So tell me kind of what you mean. Like, did you work with people well, without me, signing me, contracts? There's a couple things, right? So <laughs> when I first before I even started getting placements or anything like that, um, I was working on different artists or whatever. This particular company was like, yo, we believe in you. We think you're amazing. And, you know, we want to sign you as an artist. But before then, they came to me as wanting to sign me to a production deal slash publishing deal, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, I don't want to do a publishing deal. That's not something that I want to do. And, you know, they came to me with the artistry deal. Now, for me, I feel like we had been working together for a while. I trusted them. And for me, when you come from a place like Kentucky and it's not really known to do music and go after your dreams like that, sometimes mm -hmm. you can kind of feel like you don't have the support. So when you go to Atlanta and you got people that's done worked in the name and they're just like, yo, we believe in you. We love you. You kind of fall like, you get excited. Yeah, you kind of get excited that somebody actually believes in you. So you wouldn't think that they would even sign you to anything that you wouldn't, that wouldn't be right. But, yeah. you know, long story short, I had all these songs out. I had a couple songs out at the time. And, you know, I had John Legend wanting to sign me. Um, I had uh, Sony ATV, Cherry Lane. Disney wanted to sign me. All these people just came out. Disney? Disney. And so I had to literally go to every company and have meetings. They would take me out. We would, it's like a date. You know, when publishing companies try to- Oh, I know. Out, like, I know yeah, what you they mean. they you out, they whine and dine you. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm in the Bentley today. Oh, okay. You know, you can do <laughs> life, you know? Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I went to all the companies. I met with them and- you know, I didn't know that, okay, well, signing this and then also doing my artist deal, there was a clause in the production deal before I did my deal that okay. it had on my publishing. So when you sign the deal with a major label, what happens is the money that's supposed to come to you, it goes to the production team, right? So what? the six figures went to the production and then half of that went to me so it's kind of like you're cutting 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 and then when you get it you just got like pennies you know what i'm saying and then and how long ago was this this was recent or this, this was something was, a while this ago? was 2010 when i first got it, when i first started two years of me writing i had my placement and i had a couple stuff out and yeah i signed my deal with sony and mm. um which they wouldn't they didn't have anything. I had actually a really great deal with Sony. Uh, okay. For a new writer to have a commitment of three songs, that's kind of unheard of for the money that yeah, he was offering. Yeah, that's amazing. But, but at the same time, um, I was also in another situation, which was like a joint situation with Sony. So the money, it just, you learn a lot of things. And then <sighs> opposed to that, going into situations with artists and you know maybe befriending the artists and the different stuff like that if you don't have a contract it can kind of get kind of like messy when the money comes into play you know what i'm saying yeah. so you have to always be mindful of that too like even though your friends or you may love somebody or you trust somebody at least having a contract in place so everybody agrees with what's going on and what you're doing and making sure you get credit for this making sure you get the proper money for this making sure that you know everything is taken care of you can mm -hmm. you can still do that and i think with me uh, um some of my relationships hindered because of the wrong business. You know what I'm saying? Oh, and we hear that a lot in the business. We yeah. hear that a lot from artists. And it's so sad to keep hearing it. Because sometimes, I got to be honest, just as a fan and a viewer, sometimes we'll be sitting back reading those kind of reports, you know, about artists. Oh, they didn't get a fair. And I, my, first, my first instinct is kind of like, well, why you didn't read your contract? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But do you feel like it's more so, I 
He's just not as educated in it. I don't know. Yeah, you're like, not educated. Like, a lot of times they try to tell you, like, you know, you should just focus on doing the music and, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about the the legal side of everything. We should be able to take care of this and you can do whatever you need to do. But mm -hmm. the reality is, if anybody's handling your business, you need to be upfront and know about everything that's going on also, not just Absolutely. putting it in your management hands. And I think for me, going through the things that I've went through and seeing how people move and seeing what they do, I think that taught me a lot too with how mm -hmm. I handle my business moving forward. So I know I'm not going to be in this kind of situation again. I know that this, so it's a learning experience too. And I mean, the great thing is when I did this, I was super young, you know what I'm saying? When I right. got into this industry, I was super young. So it's like, I had time to grow. So now that I'm a, an adult, and I know what I won't allow and the things that I will allow, I'm more in control of what I want in life. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if the opportunity is not what I want, then I'll just pass on it. You know, I felt like I just had to take every opportunity because I wanted to yeah. get my name out there. And it's like, oh, it's okay. I'll take $1,000 for a track, even though my fee is 5000 a track. I'll take 1000 because off of the strength of just putting my name out there, mm -hmm. you never know. You know what I'm saying? And in this business, you never know who can blow up. You know what I mean? Yeah. So a lot of people that I grew up loving as vocalists, they did their thing. You know what I'm saying? And who who would have known that they would have just, you know, 10, 20 years later come out and have a hit and blow up and different stuff mm -hmm. like that? So you just never know, you know? Yeah. So. And you, I, I was reading the comments uh, quickly. Uh, shout out to Chronicle Speaks in, a, in the comment section. She's another YouTuber. She said, you're dropping some real jewels. Like, oh, yeah, you're, you. you're, and that's the thing. Not, also. You love her channel? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love, I love, one thing that I do love about you, and I'm just putting this out there, even though it's about me, oh. one thing that I love about you and Chronicle Speaks is that you guys report on the gossip, right? But there's no malice or no cruel intent behind the things that you speak. And I think that that's mm -hmm. important when you put in information out there because people digest it however they're hearing it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and so yes. you're being positive about the situation, you're being neutral and just stating how you feel about the situation from a genuine place, I think that is more received and it's okay. You know what I'm saying? To yeah. be critiqued by people. And I think that you two both do a great job of that. So I love you guys' this channel. So thank, thank you. you. Of thank course, you, thank of you, thank you. Look, now, speaking of look, the tea and the gossip, now, as you were giving such great advice just now, yeah. I'm doing my calculations in my head. You said 2010, mm -hmm. and I have to ask, were some of the bad deals with Vincent Herbert? Because that sounds like the time frame. Am I wrong? Um, in well, my I guess? started working with them around 2011, 2012, so no. Okay, so no, look, I'm over here. I, I thought it was fair enough to just ask because you said Sony, and I know he got his issues with Sony. Even so though he doesn't do bad deals, but that's none of my. That's you know, that's neither here or there. <laughs> We're separate in business at this at this time, <laughs> look, like forever. So right. Yeah. So my guess was wrong about the time frame. So it wasn't. But Vince, oh, the but, last. Oh, the last. Yeah. Yes, but it sounds like he does do some bad business. So I wasn't yeah. completely wrong. Okay, I just had to ask. You know, the fans would be wondering who you're talking about. I mean, I'm so transparent <laughs> now. It's like, if you want to blackball me, you can or whatever. But, you know, I think that my mental health is more important than me trying to cover people. Yeah. And that's the thing. So. You said um, certain people stop in moves for you. So mm -hmm. we don't have to say names unless you want to, because I'm here for it if you want no, to. But I mean, it, don't, it don't matter <laughs> because, you know, at the end of the day, God is going to always make sure you get to where you need to get to. And I'm okay with people mm -hmm. painting me out to be messy and be this person that they want me to be. But I know that I only operate out of love. Okay. Right. If I genuinely love you, then I genuinely love you. And I will go the distance for you. I will drop everything that I have going on to make sure that you're okay. But when you take that for granted, and you treat me wrong and you don't do the things that you said that you were going to do and you're you're not 
being upfront and honest about certain things, then my loyalty is no longer with you because now you're taking advantage of my gift. And if you yeah. take advantage of my gift, then you know what I'm saying? I can't work, you know, work with you anymore. And that's just what it is. And that's what Mr. Herbert or anybody that I come in contact with um, at this point, I really don't care about none of them, to be honest with you. Yeah, because you spend a lot of time. You spend yeah. a lot of time protecting other people's images when you they're do. treating you wrong behind you the scenes. And then, you know, you you hold it in for years. And then when you pop off, oh, it's just out of nowhere. No, this has been going on. This has been going yeah. on for years. And I've suppressed and I've, mm, and I've, mm, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, it gets a lot because then, you know. I, it's it's neither here or there. God is good. Right. God sees all, and you right. can say whatever you want, but God knows, and He will take care of whatever He needs to take care of. Let Him know. Now, speaking of taking care, God is taking care of you because you had a 100%. number 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 eight, and then a number five. But you have a number one that people don't know about. Okay, tell people about your number one working in south korea oh, yeah, yeah yes yeah. okay so let's get into that international bag okay you know i it's so <laughs> crazy because you know i i took a year and a half off and i decided to quit music in 2017 and like i said mental and depressive state i wanted mm -hmm. to just quit music i didn't want to deal with people in the industry no more i didn't have no more trust in people and so you know, I get a call from some people in Korea, like, yo, we love this record online that you're singing, you wrote it, da, da, da. yeah, can we use this record? Sure, mm -hmm. you know, that turned into, you know, hey, can you come out here in February? You know, and I'm like, to where, Asia? And they're like, yeah, you wanna come to Asia? Oh. Yeah, okay, so I end up going out there and then staying for a month and just writing. My hotel was taken care mm. of, which is what's supposed to happen. You know, yes. they made sure that, you know, per diem, all kinds of stuff is taken care of, you know, mm -hmm. so you can just go out there and you just write. And wow. I just remember being on the plane and I was just thinking to myself, like, I haven't done this in so long. And I was just kind of nervous because I feel like this is a new territory that I'm going into. And I really, wanted to quit like i really wanted to stop doing music i didn't this it wasn't something that i wanted to do but i just remember being on the plane because it's a 13 hour plane right and Dang. um yeah <laughs> um you have a lot of time of self-reflection <laughs> um, in one space but you know yes. i just remember just like praying and just saying like god if this is something that i'm supposed to do i will do the work but show me just just show me that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And mm -hmm. I went out there the first night that I was there, soon right off the plane, I ended up going to the studio, there are four records that night. Next thing you know, I have 40 hey. some records done with those couple of weeks that I was there, 40 records. And they're just like, we've never seen nobody like just work like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So from that, I just started getting placements and placements and placements and placements and placements. And for a songwriter going out there and having so many placements and one trip, it was just like, yeah, we're gonna have to use, we're gonna have to make you come back quarterly. So now I spend more than half of the year over in Asia. So I literally just got back in March. So I'm here. But when everything start clearing up, I'm right back over there. So I feel wow. like even though doors close and you might be sad about it and you might be hurt and you might be going through so many emotions with, with certain people and certain things, God is going to always open a different door that you might not even think about. And I never thought that I would be in Korea right yeah. now from the artist. But, you know, I have a number one record over in Korea. and SF9. And SF9 and you know it's just been a surreal moment and I've been so much like I've been so happy like the artists over there they appreciate the creators they love the songwriters you know what I'm saying and so I think that that's ultimately the goal is that you want to feel appreciated by the people that you help you know what I'm saying yes and I think here I think we've lost the sensibility of you are the artist yes but there are people that do help you because you yeah. are not a writer by yourself first and foremost you mm -hmm. know so show appreciation to the songwriter i know that every artist want to say hey i wrote this and i wrote and i wrote and i 
you know, it's a collaborative effort. Everybody does it. And I think that more people will be more brought to the light as creatives if people started shedding light on the people that helped them create the situations, which is why I made it my job to put credits along yes. with my album and post them because I yes. feel like, yes, I am the vessel that sings the song. I am the person that such and such, even though I write mostly all of my stuff from scratch, no scribble, scrabble, no changing heed to her. And then say, yeah. I, wrote, I actually write, I actually arrange my stuff, my harmonies, everything. I record myself. My mic is right here. Look, this is my mic is ready. Right. You know ready. what I'm saying? Like, I record everything. <laughs> I mix everything. And if I'm not mixing it, my boy C knows mixing it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Ain't going to be no leaks. Ain't going to be no leaks. No, definitely <laughs> not. I handle every aspect of the recording process. And so when you hear it, like, it's literally work that I've put into wow. you know this stuff. So to hear people love it, that means a lot because I put a lot of work into it. And I'm so used to doing it for everybody else mm -hmm. that it feels good to finally be able to do something for myself, you know? So. Yeah. And that's what I've enjoyed watching as a fan. I'm like, it felt like it was TC's moment. Like he's been writing <laughs> all these, you've written for all these phenomenal people, you know, Brandy, John Legend, Keisha Cole, J-Lo, Justin Bieber, you know, Tamar Braxton, all these people. So for you to have your moment, you've always written songs for you. You've released music before, but this was a complete album, the Rain album. And I love it. Like I really do. Stay tuned for part two of this Candid Candace exclusive with T.C. Tyon Christian. You just got to live life and like, you know, you just got to be thankful for it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Because, yeah. <laughs> This is a Candid Candace exclusive.